Hey guys and welcome back. So in the next few videos what we're going to be doing is using the backtracking algorithm to solve a very common or popular game called Sudoku. Now this is actually a really fun project and I really personally enjoyed writing this before doing this video but what I'm going to be doing kind of in this I don't know how many videos it's going to take maybe two or three is first explaining what backtracking is how that works and why it's a very powerful algorithm for a problem like this and then moving on to actually writing the code uh, and getting all of the uh, everything kind of working. Now, the code is not super complicated for this and the algorithm is not that difficult either. A lot of people hear like backtracking and they think it's confusing or you have to be a computer science major to understand this. It's not that difficult. I'm going to try to break it down for you guys in this video and understand exactly what it does. Uh, but it's really useful and this is a really cool project and it looks great on a resume as well, uh, especially if you're a student that you made something cool like this. So I'll show you guys uh, my working kind of solver right now. So essentially this is the code. It's nothing too long, just 100 lines and most of it's cosmetic anyways in terms of printing out and like the board and everything. So it's not anything too complicated. Uh, but if I run it, you can see this is my starting board. It looks something like this. And we end up with a solve solution that is this. Now, you could possibly give this a board where there is no solution. I just looked one up online and found like this is the correct solution to the board to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes in this video. Uh, but this is how it works. Happens pretty well instantly. And yeah, it's a very fast algorithm as well for something like this. Okay, so let's talk about how we would actually approach this problem. So essentially, we're given a starting board. Uh, oops, I did not mean to do that. I guess I had my eraser on. Uh, we're given a starting board. Maybe it looks something like this, okay? And what we're attempting to do essentially is find a solution to this board uh, where, you know, like we have a valid Sudoku solution. Now, this board that I drew here is just some random board. I don't know if there's actually a valid solution to this, uh, but I'm just going to walk through kind of the steps on how we would go about doing that using the backtracking algorithm. Now, before I go into that, I quickly want to talk about something which is called the naive algorithm. So I believe naive is spelt like that. Um, but essentially what this is, is the way that you would kind of approach this if you didn't know about backtracking. So the common way that you might want to do this, and obviously it's going to be very slow, is just try every single possible combination of numbers. So what I mean by that is just try like one, two, three, four, five, and keep doing that for every single square and generate every single possible combination of numbers for the board until eventually your solution just works. Now, this would work. Um, this algorithm works fine. In fact, th this way of doing things you can do for almost any kind of solution. The issue with this is it is slow. And you can think of it as like each square uh, has nine possibilities, okay? Every single square that we have has nine possibilities. Now, I mean, you have to count how many squares we're given to determine how many um, to subtract. But essentially, if you have what a nine by nine grid, that's uh, 81 squares with nine possibilities. So I believe uh, we end up getting something like nine to the 81 different possible combinations of solutions. Now, I don't know if you guys know anything about exponentials, but nine to the 81 is an absolutely massive number. In fact, that's probably in like the trillions or something. So think about how many operations your computer would have to do uh, to generate that like kind of subset of solutions or that set of solutions to this board. And then it would have to be validating all of those as well. So this is really not a good way to approach this. Now, I don't want to like, I don't know if this math is correct, so don't hold me to that. But even if it's not, and even nine to like the nine is still a massive number, right? So you get the point in that doing that is just not efficient at all. So what we want to do is use something called backtracking. Now, the way that backtracking works is very simple. And all you do essentially is it's similar to the naive algorithm, except what you're going to do is you're going to pick some kind of empty square. So step one. Uh, pick, I should have left myself more room on the side here, pick empty. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick some kind of empty square. So what we'll start off by doing, and I'm just going to go from left and down to like, like that. Okay. Uh, is just pick this square. So that's our first step. Pick some kind of empty square. And now what we're going to do is try all numbers. Okay. Uh, oops, don't know what happened there try all numbers and excuse my messy handwriting. So essentially what we'll do is we'll start by trying one and then we'll try two and then we'll try three and so on. So what we're going to do though, this is a bit different is as soon as we find a number that fits in this square that works, then we'll move to the next empty square. So try all numbers, uh, find one that 
works. Okay. Uh, just, yeah, I know you probably can't even read that because I didn't really leave my, myself enough space to do this, but let's try this. Okay. So the, what we'll do is we'll go, we're going to try one. We'll look in this row and we're going to validate and see if one works. Does one work? Well, no, it doesn't because one's right here. I'm assuming you guys know how to play Sudoku. Essentially, you can't have anything that's the same number in the same row, same column, or in the same kind of little grid box like this. Okay. So one does not work. So what we'll do, well, we're trying all numbers. We didn't haven't found one that works yet. So now we'll try two. Does two work? Well, is two in, in the row? No, it's not. Is two in the column? No, it's not. Is it in the box? No, it's not. So two works. So we found one that works and now we will repeat this. So what we'll do next is we'll say, okay, so we'll go to the next empty square. So we're going to go to this step here and we're going to try one. Does one work? No, it doesn't. We'll try two. Does two work? No, it doesn't. Does three? No, it doesn't. Does four? No, it doesn't. Does five? Yes, it does. So we found nine, four, two, five, um, three, one. Now I know so far you're thinking, well, maybe this is, this is the same as just trying every single possible solution. You're just essentially trying everything. You're correct, but there's another step we're going to add in a second um, that you will see. So what we'll do now is we go two, five, Okay, um, and now we'll go to the next empty square because we're repeating this process and let's try. Okay, so let's try one. Does one work? No, it doesn't. Does two? No, it doesn't. Three? No. Four? No, it doesn't. Five? No. Six? Does six work? Um, I believe six does work. Yes, it does. Okay, so six works. So now we have these. This is our current solution. Two, five, six, and then obviously everything else that's in here. All right, so next square, let's try this again. Don't worry, I'm gonna to get to the backtracking part in just a second, but this is important. Okay, so one, no. So eventually we end up and we get eight as our possible answer. That's the only thing that can go in this row, right? But look, eight, eight's right here. So that's not a valid solution. So what do we do now? Well, what we do now is we backtrack, okay? So as soon as we get to a point where the solution cannot be completed because Eight being here is just wrong. We can't have that in our solution. What we do is we backtrack. Now, these are not really the perfectly correct steps that I'm writing here, but I just want you to get an idea of what we do. So when we get to eight and we find that this cannot, there's no possible position for this square. We can't use one. We can't like, there's nothing that works here based on what we currently have, right? Well, what we need to do is we need to backtrack. And what that means is we're going to erase eight and we're going to go back to the previous step and we're going to try, we're going to continue from the previous step. So we had tried six, right? So what we'll do now is we'll try seven. Does seven work? No, it doesn't. Cause seven's there. We'll try eight. Does eight work? No, it doesn't. Cause eight's here. And we'll try nine. Does nine work? No, it doesn't because nine is here. So what we do now is the same thing as before. So now we're at the point where we have two, five, and there's nothing that can go in this square because remember we tried what is it like seven uh, or whatever number, or we tried six, which was here. And then the next position after that didn't work. So we know now we, after trying seven, eight, nine, that these two squares can't be correct because with these two squares being this, we can't get two valid spaces here, right? So what we need to do now is we need to backtrack again. So what we do is we say, okay, so let's erase nine. Now we're going to go back to five and we're going to try something else. So now we'll go to five and we'll try six. And we'll see, does six work? Yes, it does. Okay. So six works. So now we repeat the process again and we go here and eventually what do we end up with? Well, we're going to end up with, uh, does one work? No. So we end up with like nine or something like that. We say that doesn't work. So then we backtrack. So we go here and now instead of six, we try seven. Does seven work? No, it doesn't. What about eight? Eight does work. Okay. And then we repeat the process and we keep going until eventually we reach a solution that works. So essentially what we're doing is we're kind of completing one square at a time and we're going to just keep recursively checking to make sure all these solutions work until eventually we reach one that does work so rather than trying to continue a solution that can never possibly work which we do with the naive algorithm we're only going to continue solutions that currently work and then if they don't work we'll backtrack to the last step and try something again and that's essentially how the backtracking algorithm works i hope that my illustration gave you a bit of an idea as we go through this and kind of code it. Hopefully you'll understand it more, but this is the basis of backtracking pretty straightforward. And I want to, again, emphasize that this is going to be a lot faster than trying every single possible combination. Because if we tried every single combination, what we do is simply generate, um, like nine to the 81 different solutions, and then just try them all on the board until eventually we find one that works, which is really not an efficient way to approach this problem. Okay. 
So here we are, we're at 10 minutes. Let's get started um, on the code, just the basics. And then the next video, we'll do most of the actual algorithm. We'll see if we can put this into two videos. So um, this is obviously my working file. But what I'm gonna do actually is just copy in this board and just note that all of the code that I write will be on my website. There'll be a link in the description. And uh, yeah, if you wanna download anything, anything from there, feel free if you don't wanna write this all out with me. But I do recommend you listen because this is really, I think it's an interesting algorithm to learn. So, okay, so we have some kind of different steps to our algorithm. Now, let's let's go back to this for one second as we talk about what we're actually gonna need to program. So the first thing we need to do is pick some kind of empty square, right? So we're gonna need a function that does that for us. Given this board um, in like a 2D array form is what we're gonna do. We need to pick some kind of empty square. So that's pretty straightforward. We'll just loop through and we'll look for some, one that's empty or has zero or something in it, okay? Next is trying all the numbers. So we're going to need a for loop that goes through and for each empty square that we find, it's going to try each number. Um, we're going to have to find if that number is valid. So we need some function that's going to do this. That's going to find if the, uh, the number that we put in the square is valid given the current board, right? And then what we'll do is if we find that it's valid, we repeat this kind of process. And then we have this backtracking, which is like, if it's not valid, we go back. So essentially, like say we put like four here and four is not valid. Well, we need to reset this to zero. So that's something we'll have to do as well. So those are kind of the steps and that's what we're going to do now um, in code form. Well, what I want to start by doing is just being able to print out this board. Um, so I'm just going to make a function that says print underscore board. Now you don't have to do this, but it's nice to get a visual representation and given the board, which I'm just going to call BO, uh, we will print this out. Now to do this, I mean, it might look a bit complicated. It's not that confusing. We're just going to say for I in range, the length of board. Okay. And what we're going to say now is we're going to say if I modulus three and I does not equal zero, what we're simply going to do is just print uh, a horizontal line. Now, the reason we're doing this is just because we want to um, kind of separate our board into like the different sections that you saw. Like if I, if I run solver, we're just going to be printing this essentially when I is, uh, what do you call it? Divisible by three, because after every three rows, we want to print this uh, and then same thing like that, right? That makes sense. Okay. So we'll do that. Now what we're going to do is going to do another for loop. We're going to say four J in range and we'll say the length of BO zero, which essentially is going to get the length of our, uh, what do you, our rows, right? Cause we have a nine by nine grid and it's set up in kind of this form. Then what we'll do is, well, we need to print all the numbers, but we also need to print those horizontal lines. So the first thing we're going to check is we're going to say if, uh, what do you call it? J modulus three equals equals zero and J does not equal zero. The reason we're doing this is so that we don't get uh, a line printed on the left side immediately because, well, if it's the first thing in the row or like the zero with column, then we'll, we would end up printing something because zero modulus three equals zero. So we just got to check to make sure it's not zero. What we'll do is we'll simply print, um, what do you call it? This. So like this little up thing, and we're just going to say end equals this. Now what this does just means it doesn't print a backslash N, which means you don't go to the next line, uh, which is what we want when we're printing out each column or sorry, each row. So now what we'll do, uh, I believe is we'll say if, uh, J equals equals eight, then we're simply going to print, uh, the number. So which is going to be B O I J and like that. Now else, what we'll do is we'll print B O I J plus a space. Now I just need to put this in a string as well. And I'll talk about this in a second. Okay. So I think I might have done this correctly. I just have to check here. Uh, and yes, that looks correct. Okay. So essentially what this is going to do, and I believe we're actually done now is we're just going to check. So every time we're on the third row, we'll print a horizontal line. Then what we're going to do is for every single, uh, what do you call it? Like position in the row is we'll check if it's sorry, these need to go back one, my bad guys. So they're not in this if statement. We'll check if it is the third kind of element or like a multiple of three, and then we'll draw that horizontal line, but we'll just say end is this so that when we draw the next position, it's after that. And then what we're doing is we're checking if we're at the last position and then we're going to make sure that we actually do that backslash end to go back to the next line. Uh, so let's actually just try uh, print board and make sure this works and we'll give it a board. 
and let's run working and see if this works. Okay, so we're running into a bit of an issue here. Uh, let me check. Oh, I forgot to do this. We have to just, sorry, end equals this. So after we print this, just do end equals this, which just means essentially stay on the same line. So when we keep printing things. Okay, so let's run this now. Uh, and okay, that's all right. We're still running into an issue. Ah, okay. So essentially I forgot to do the I modules three equals equals zero. Let's add that in my mistake guys. Uh, and then we might have to do the same for J actually, I think we'll be okay. So let's try this. All right, there we go. So this now is, is what I wanted. Uh, if we want to get rid of these horizontal lines on the left side, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Then we can just do and J does not equal zero, which I'm pretty sure I had before, but anyways, let's run this now. And there we go. We get the Sudoku board. Okay. So my mistake on that guys, but that's how we print it out uh, and just get a nice visual output for that. Okay. So now that we've done print board. Let's do one more function and then I'll move on to the next video probably and start doing more of the complex stuff. Uh, so let's write the first function that we're going to need, which is going to be find empty. So remember what this is simply going to do is given a board, uh, just going to find some kind of empty square. Now we need to just return the position of that square because that's the position we're going to try different elements in, right? So what we'll do to find this is simply just loop through the board. And if we find a position that is empty and I denote empty by zero, you could use a blank space. You could use whatever you want. Then we'll just return that position to wherever we're calling from. So in this case, we'll just say for I in range the length of bo and we'll say for j in range the length of bo zero which just means the length of each row then what we're going to do is simply check if that position is zero so what we'll do to do that is we'll say if bo ij equals equals zero return and we'll just return a tuple that is the uh, row and the column. Now we'll just denote that by this because usually re you return column then row like x y, but we're going to return y x. Uh, so just make sure that we remember that by just adding a little comment there. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for this video. In the next video, we'll finish this all up. We're going to write the whole algorithm. We'll do a bunch of tests um, and talk about why this algorithm is so efficient. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you again in the next one.